Hello, this is Greg the Rural Economist, and welcome to the Wild Edible series. But first, the disclaimer, please listen close today. There are a lot of things out there that you can eat that are very good for you, taste good. There are a lot of things that are not. Some of the things will make you very sick, and some can kill you. Some of them, even though you can eat them, if you don't prepare them properly, or pick them properly, can kill you as well. Thus far, everything that I've shown you on these videos, I've been able to pick and eat straight and not ever think about it. Today is not going to be one of those days. Today we're going to be talking about American pokeweed, also known as poke salad, inkberry, oh lord, tons and tons of names. Now, I've waited kind of late in the year to do this one because I wanted to be able to show you the whole thing. You can see that right now it has a brilliant red stalk. And the berries are a dark, dark purple, almost black. At this point, the only part of this plant that is usable as far as food are the berries, okay? This plant is actually quite toxic the way it is right now. But the berries, you can extract the juice. You can make jellies and jams and things like that. A lot of people blend them with other juices. Um, a herbalist fairly locally actually told my aunt to take the berries, dry them, and swallow them whole like a peel. The reason that she told her to do that is it actually has anti-inflammatory and anti-arthritic properties. Um, I've read about the freezing, I've read about the dehydrating. The juice can be made where it's potable or you can take it into your body. The seeds, you cannot, okay? So if you're gonna make juices, you gotta really, really strain all the seeds out. The reason she's able to take it straight like she does is because she doesn't chew it up and she doesn't crush up the seeds so a lot of the toxins inside the seeds aren't released now this plant is far too large to use as food but this is one of the first pot herbs in the spring that you can harvest in the wild all right and then there's a lot of differences there too what they say is as long as the plant isn't over I have read as much as 18 inches and I've had read as small as 6 inches in height, then you can harvest the leaves and you can cook them. Now here's the thing about cooking them. In general, everybody suggests that you boil it at least twice. Uh, boil it for a minute, maybe two, drain it, rinse it, and then boil it again really well. Now I have a friend, Donna, hey, this is for you. She only boils it once, takes it out, and then scrambles it up with some eggs, and then eats it. Scrambling it with eggs is the way my great-grandmother ate it. I don't know how many times she boiled it. Have no idea, but I want you to keep that in mind. The stalks on younger plants can actually be cut, peeled, and then cut up and battered with like cornmeal, uh, and eating like okra like we do down here. Also, you can peel them and then boil them and use them as an asparagus substitute. All right, now, this plant can kill you if it's not done properly. So a lot of you are going, why would I want to eat a plant that this guy's telling me could kill me? All right, well, here's the basics. First of all, it covers most of the United States. There's several states right in the mountain region and kind of the western plains where it's, it doesn't occur. Uh, it occurs in like Texas, but it only occurs in so many counties. Now, the eastern United States is very prominent. I probably have 300 of these plants on my little property here, okay? But nutritionally, it is incredible. It has protein. Calcium, phosphorus, iron, magnesium, sodium, potassium, zinc, vitamin A, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, vitamin C. Whew. Incredibly. 
nutritious. All right. Um, the juice has been used as a food coloring, but it's currently banned. You can make a red dye from the berries, which is still used today by natural crafters to produce a red coloring in fabrics and all kinds of things, okay? If you eat this incorrectly, some of the symptoms include burning in the mouth, heavy saliva production, gastrointestinal cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, all the way to convulsions and death due to respiratory failure. This is not a plant that you play around with. If you're going to eat it, make sure you're doing it right. If you ingest small quantities, you normally recover within one to two days without any treatment. Okay, But this is not a plant that you play with unless you know what you're doing or you know somebody who does know what they're doing. All right. But I let this one grow this long. That way I could show you all the different parts. I'm doing some more research myself on the juice for the anti-inflammation and anti-pain properties. If I do anything with it, I'll let you know in the future. This is Greg the Rural Economist wishing you rural dreams and homestead wishes. Bye-bye.